Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I put together 15 of my favorite Halloween DIYs, all with a little bit of a black and white theme and using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So let's get started. On the first DIY, we're going to use two of the Dollar Tree wood rounds. The reason that I'm using two is that these signs are very thin. A lot of times they warp and stuff like that and they don't look too like substantial hanging on the wall, but if you pair a couple together, you can do a few tricks on these to make them look even better. So the first thing I did was take off the hanger on one, but leave it on the other. That way um, our wood round will still have a hanger. And I want this DIY sign to kind of look like a moon. So I'm going to start here with the back sign. And I'm really only going to paint the ivory right around the edges because this is going to be the back sign. I'm going to pair them together to make it super chunky. But I was afraid you might be able to see some of the natural wood through. So just a little bit around the edges and leaving um, the hanger in place. Now with the second sign, we're gonna paint the whole thing with the ivory color. And I wanted to do like kind of a spooky Halloween night sign with this, but again, a really super easy fast one too. So I'm just gonna go over all of this with the ivory paint. And I'm gonna do a couple of coats until I get really good coverage. I also make sure I do the edges like I did before because you might be able to see that on the sides in the final project. Now, once I get this painted all ivory and dried, I thought to add a little bit of character to the front sign, I'm going to use a ruler and a razor blade and just cut like through the wood a little bit to kind of make it look like a slatted wood sign. Even though it's a moon, I still wanted it to have like a little bit more character. So using a metal ruler is great when you are using a razor blade like this because it's really easy to cut next to it. And we're just going to cut like several board designs here. I think that looks kind of cute. Now for the bats, I wanted to do bats against a Halloween moon. I actually got this set of window clings at Walmart, um, $1.24, so pretty much the same price. And I also got one of the little spooky metal signs from the Dollar Tree. I think Dollar Tree does have some more realistic bat window clings if you're lucky. Sometimes all you can find is like the more cartoonish ones. But I wanted some black bats that were a little bit more realistic. And Walmart usually has them at a good price. So we're just going to use the window decals to give us little black bats you know, um, flying across our Halloween night. So I went ahead and put my word down just kind of where I would want it. So I'd know exactly how to space out my little black bats. And then I'm just going to go over and Mod Podge everything down. I decided to do four and then that would be the perfect amount. Leave me some room on the sign for spooky. I did Mod Podge underneath the window clings and then I Mod Podge the entire sign on top. So everything's going to have the same like matte finish in the end. Now, since I did the slatted boards, I want to kind of continue that. So I am going to have to go back and cut through the bats to give them that little bit of character too. And it's just a small detail that can make a DIY look a little bit more high end. So I think that's ready to go. We can go ahead and attach one of our little metal Halloween words to the sign. I love these. I think they're so cute and such an easy way to DIY your own sign with these. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like the galvanized metal like that. And I just need to hot glue that down. Hot gluing metal can be a little tricky, but it can work. Um, I'm just going to make sure that I use as much as hot glue as I can. Trying to avoid the openings in the letters and getting that stuck to the sign as soon as I can. Now I told you I wanted to make this like a thicker, more chunky sign. So that's what we're gonna do at this point. Now I had left the hanger on the back sign. And then I was like, you know what? I think the hanger should be on the front of the sign. So that is, I switched it out and that was a mistake. So leave your hanger on the back side. Now to make it nice and chunky, I'm gonna use Dollar Tree rope, starting right here at the bottom, 
We are gonna hot glue that around where it is just gonna be the side of the little chunky moon. The color is gonna match perfectly with the color that we did for the moon and it's gonna make it nice and thick. A little trick is to also place a piece in the middle so you have something to glue there too in case you have any bowing in your thin um, wood rounds. I bought a case of these and the longer that I've had them here in the Florida humidity, the more they kind of try to warp on me a little bit. And then I just lay my front one right on there, gluing that to the rope as well, cleaning it up any excess hot glue I might have there. That's when I realized I messed up on the hanger, so I just kind of pulled it around and stapled it to the back. I don't know why I switched that out. I had it right the first time, but that's okay. So this is how it turned out, our little chunky moon with little black bats across it that says spooky. I think it's so cute. If you wanted to continue the moon theme, you could always, you know, put some little craters on there, but I kind of wanted a little bit more of an abstract scene. And I think it turned out really spooky, cute. What do you think about our little bat moon? On to our next DIY. This is a little bit smaller wood round from the Dollar Tree, just because I wanted a little bit more of a smaller base for this, but you could use um, the raw wood one too if you can find this. This is like a birth announcement one, I guess. And um, it's just gonna be a basis for a ghost. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint it ivory just in case you can see through it at all. Once I attach my ghost to it, I don't want you to be able to see any of the words behind it. And shout out to another creator that inspired me to make this project. I saw this on Instagram, um, a similar project made by the Navage Patch. So if you haven't watched them, be sure to check them out. He has great ideas and he did one similar and I wanted to see if I could do like a Dollar Tree version. And so that is what this is. We're gonna use just the small wood round and some of the Dollar Tree white rope. This is the thicker white rope. You know, you could do it basically with any of them, but I kind of just try to figure out what I could do with one rope. So as you can see, I can make two rows of our bat um, coming down each side of the wood round to give us a basis for that. So I just cut it in half like that. And then we're just gonna start hot gluing. I leave the hanger in place and I start hot gluing the rope around the edge. Now, I only really need like a half of a circle like that but since I already had like the whole wood round and you're not gonna be able to see it down there anyway, I'm just leaving it all intact, but you could always cut um, your background in like a half semicircle if you were using cardboard or something like that. Then I repeat the same thing here with the second row, just gluing to the inside and it kind of looks like um, doll hair at this point, right? And I just start opening up more packages of rope. So this is my second package and doing another couple rows here. You're gonna want it long enough to go all the way from one end to another and a third package. Now you can see that I'm cutting them each a little bit shorter each time, but you know, you are gonna have some scraps on a project like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and this is package number four trying to count for you and do a couple more rows with that one. And we want to keep doing that until we fill it all the way up. And I have a scrap piece that will fit perfectly in the middle. Now I need this to be a little bit more even at the bottom. You can see I got pretty close to the right length, but it could be better. So I just laid a ruler on top of mine and kind of sketched that out with a Sharpie. So I would know um, where to cut that. And you're gonna have to use some strong, um, sharp scissors. These are my fabric scissors and they actually do a pretty good job cutting through the rope. These are the Singer ones. Um, but I'm just gonna go and it's such a big rope, you kind of have to cut one at a time. Now, once you get them all cut, that's when the fun part starts. You just start unwinding your rope into the three strands until you get up to the point that you hot glued it, right? 
And this is going to provide like the frilly part for the ghost that kind of makes it look like it is floating around. And I love the curliness of the rope. I think it gives the little ghost a lot of character. So take your time and just unwind every single one of your ropes, leaving all the rope that you glued down for the semicircle all in place, of course. That looks super cute. And now we just need to give our little ghost some character. So I thought for a face, we could use some of these little black stones from the Dollar Tree. I guess if you wanted um, a coastal touch, you could always do like some seashells painted black or some black seashells too. You're just going to want something. You know what? You could even use like black felt. I tried to find a couple of eyes that were ovals and like a really longer one oval for the mouth. And so I just kind of um, played around with them until I was super happy with it. Now it's just a matter of attaching the face. I'm going to do the mouth right here on the very center piece to give that little um, ghost scary face and then glue on the other two black rocks for eyes. And I think we pulled it off the little rope ghost using supplies from the Dollar Tree. He's so cute and I can't wait to display him this year for Halloween. This is how he looks hanging on my wall. I love the black and white theme for Halloween, but I also love the fact that this is made out of rope. So it's going to go great with all of my coastal decor. Super spooky cute. Okay, the next DIY, I needed a black frame. I decided to do mine with one of these little square Dollar Tree frames, but you could always do this with like an eight by 10. It would work well too. And I just wanted something black. This was perfect because it doesn't have glass or anything. So we're just gonna pop out the back of this sign and we're gonna do a really cute like black and white spider web sign for this. I'm not gonna need any of the little staples here on the side. So I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers to go around and remove all of those first to give us just a plain square frame. Now for the spider web, I'm gonna use some of the white cotton twine from the hardware section at Dollar Tree. But you know what? They have macrame cord at Dollar Tree now that would work perfectly for this too. This might be a little bit thinner though, so you might wanna go with the cotton twine. And I just tie a knot in one end, stringing it to the other. I use a staple to attach it um, to the frame. And I'm gonna just make mine go from one corner to the other. This is the back of the frame, so you won't be able to see this part. And you definitely have to tie them to make the you know staple keep it in place. I want to keep repeating that pattern, so I kind of crisscrossed abnormally. I didn't go completely one corner to the other, and now I crisscrossed you know right across the frame, and then I can start spinning my web. I do that by tying it to one of the ropes and then pulling it, tying it to the next rope until we can go around and do like the center part here to a, a spider web. All the way till we get to the other side and then we're gonna go around and do the same thing, just tying the, um, the twine each time you come to the rope. So I have a total of um, like four that go all the way across and then I do two rings in the middle. You are gonna want it to make it look a little bit off center like I did to make it look like a real web. And then all it needs is a spider. I got these little fuzzy spiders at Walmart, but you could always use the ones from the Dollar Tree too. And I just hot glue that to our little web. And this was so easy to make. It's a really cute Halloween decoration that would fit in pretty much with any decor. This is how it looks hanging on my wall for Halloween. And I love that little black fuzzy spider. So cute. And the web was so easy to do. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to do like a little spooky Halloween tree. So I'm going to use a little metal um, bucket from the Dollar Tree. One of the little green foam pieces that fit perfectly inside. Also from the Dollar Tree and a Dollar Tree sign. I want this to be nice and sturdy, and so I'm gonna go ahead and use some black rocks from the Dollar Tree. It can be any kind of weight to weigh that down, and then we can use the foam to fill up the top part of the little metal bucket. And I just got a plain galvanized metal bucket, nothing on it, but if you could find a Halloween one that was black and white, that would be super cute too. And I just put my foam down right inside. 
And this looks like one I've already used before, but that's okay because we're gonna cover it up with some creepy looking Spanish moss. And I just hot glue that to the top. That's gonna make the bucket look nice and full. It's also gonna cover up all of that green foam that's underneath. It does end up looking a little wild once you get it all on there, but you can always trim it up. And then that's gonna provide the perfect base for a little spooky Halloween tree. We're gonna do that by using one of these like black and white Halloween signs. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the staples and the ribbon from the back. And we're gonna use these to kind of make a directional arrow sign, but using a creepy stick I found in my neighbor's yard. <laughs> and so I got one that had a little bit of a T at the top. I thought that made it look really cool. And I'm just gonna hot glue the flat side down to the top side. It does have a little galvanized metal ghost hanging from it, but I like that touch. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. It's gonna go great with the little metal bucket. I wasn't sure if this was gonna stay on. So I had some scrap Dollar Tree rope that I used to hot glue that on there to make it a little bit stronger. Then I was trying to decide if I had enough room for all three of my signs, and I don't think I do. So I picked out which ones were my favorite. I'm gonna glue this one on the same exact way, gluing the stick on there, and then following that up by gluing on some rope to kind of make a little bit of a brace to make this sign stronger. Just a simple free stick. It's gonna look way better than like a yardstick or anything like that. And then um, to kind of take away the sheen of the paper and to make this a little bit more weatherproof, I go over both signs with matte Mod Podge to seal them down a little bit. Because that's one thing I'm definitely gonna fight by putting this out on the porch is weather. I'm gonna go ahead and use my scissors to cut like, you know, a little bit of a hole to get me started here on the foam. Also putting some hot glue down in that hole so we can just put the stick down in there and make a really strong base to hold this up. Quick and easy little directional arrow sign. Looks super creepy for Halloween. And I think it turned out really fun. What do you guys think about this one? Let me show you how it looks. This is how it looks sitting in my house. It would be great sitting in your house too, but I actually use this to decorate out front of my house for Halloween too. And I love how it turned out. Very simple. Okay, let's move on to gnomes. Now I got some of these black sparkle socks. We're only gonna need one from Dollar Tree. And I wanna weigh it down because we are gonna make some fun sock gnomes for Halloween. So I had some leftover gravel from the Dollar Tree. You can use whatever you've got. You can even use beans, rocks, whatever. You just want something to weigh down the bottom of your gnome. And then I'm gonna use some fluff from an old pillow to stuff the body of my little gnome. And I want it to be long enough to use one of the little gnome beards from the stockings from the Christmas section at Dollar Tree. And uh, so I kind of use that as a guide. So probably about halfway up, I'm gonna take a black zip tie from the hardware section at Dollar Tree, zip tie that off and cut off the remaining sock. Now I got one of these stockings. I love these because you can, if you're careful, just use a little hot glue to remove the little gnome beard from the stocking and it is gonna be ready to go nose and all. And we're gonna make this gnome a black cat one. So I also got a black cat costume from the, ch the kids aisle at Dollar Tree. That's the same black sparkle material. My beard was a little bit bigger than it needed to be. So I just trimmed it down to size. And we're gonna glue that on right underneath where we zip tied the sock. And I just hot glue that. We're gonna have a little gnome hat that kind of covers up that area that um, we zip tied the top of the sock. And it's also gonna cover up the top of the beard. So this is the piece we had left over. These black sparkle socks are perfect because they match my costume, but they're not super long, but that's okay. We can still kind of make it into a point. And I use another zip tie to um, kind of, you know, narrow it down and close it off at the end. I do a little bit more pillow stuff in that to make it stand up. And we have a little tiny black gnome hat. And I hot glue that down to the back, also on top of the beard, just to kind of keep it all together. And I love these black sparkle socks that I got at the Dollar Tree. I think they're so cute for a Halloween gnome. 
So we're gonna trim off the excess zip tie here, trying to form that into a point the best that we can. And then comes in the costume. It comes with a little headband with cat ears, a tail. It's gonna be perfect. So I just cut like the strap off the tail. We are gonna cut the ears off the headband because the headband's just too big for our little gnome. But we want these really cute little black sparkle ears. And we can just attach those directly to the hat that we made for the gnome. I'm just trimming them down, trying to make them look the best that I can, hot gluing those in place where they would be sticking out like on the side if this were a little black cat. I know um, the Dollar Tree Plus has some really cute Halloween gnomes this year, but I always enjoy making them. I think they're so fun to DIY. So he has two little cat ears. So now it's time for the tail. Um, I was trying to figure out the best way to attach it. It does have like a little elastic strap here that goes around. And so I just went ahead and wrapped that around my existing gnome, but I also did have to hot glue it here in place at the bottom of my little cat gnome. So it will stay in place. And you can't really see the strap in the front anyway because it has the beard. Now I am going to use some black pipe cleaners for little, you know, it needs little whiskers for our little black cat. So I'm gonna do like two whiskers on each side with that, just cutting those down to size. I was trying to decide if it needed two or three, but these black pipe cleaners are kind of thick. So I ended up only using two and I just hot glue those right above the nose on each side. And that is pretty much all there is to it. We have a sparkly a black cat gnome. I think it is so cute. I love this little guy. This is how he turned out. We're gonna do a total of three little um, gnomes for Halloween. So I'm gonna use my other black sparkle sock, filling that in with some pebbles to weigh that down as well. And this one's gonna be a vampire bat gnome. I found a great bat black sparkle headband, I think at um, Dollar General for a dollar. And they might have those at Dollar Tree too, but I couldn't find one. I also used my pillow fluff on this one. We're gonna make this one exactly the same way. So we zip tie about halfway up after stuffing it with the pillow fluff. And we're also gonna use another one of these. I stock up on these every year um, at Christmas and a lot of my stores have Christmas stuff out right now. So you might be able to find them. And I just remove the beard, making sure the nose is glued on properly and then trimming it down to size because I know it'll be a little bit too big. So same thing, I hot glue the little beard onto the black sparkle socks right up there at the top. And then we can start working on the gnome hat. Again, these are a little bit shorter than gnome hats than I would like. So if you can find a longer sock, it'd be perfect. But I love the black sparkle. So that is definitely why I went for this pair. So I just zip tie the point um, or the bottom into a point and give that a little bit of stuffing. We definitely want that to stand straight up since it's not a very tall gnome hat. And same thing, we're gonna hot glue that to the back and then also to the front. You want that little gonk look of covering up the little gnome eyes. And then we can decorate this as a bat. The little headband has like little black sparkle, bat wings, little black bat ears, and um, it's really simple to decorate this gnome. We're just gonna trim off each one of the bat wings and each one of the little ears. We're also gonna add another detail to this one that I thought would be really fun. So I'm gonna flip my gnome over and just glue the little bat wings here to the back. And these are kind of like a black glitter, so it goes perfect with the black sparkle. Cleaning that up a little bit. And then the little bat ears here to the top. And I don't just want him to be like a little bit of a bat gnome. I also want him to look like a vampire bat gnome since we're doing Halloween. So I thought he just needed one more feature. Um, the cat costume came with a bow tie. So I had some extra black sparkle fabric 
So I just cut down two little vampire fangs out of the black sparkle as well. And we can like attach those inside the little gnome beard. And I thought that gave him a really funny little touch. So here he is, our ferocious little vampire bat gnome. I love him. I think he's so adorable. And this is how he turned out. So cute. Just a couple items from the Dollar Tree and Dollar General. Now for the last Halloween gnome, I wanted to do a white ghost gnome. So again, I'm going to use one of the little beards, um, gnome beard so stockings from the Dollar Tree. But this time we're going to use some white socks. I couldn't really find any kind of socks with lots of character. So I just got some plain like white anklet socks. It's all I really could find at Dollar Tree. And we're just going to make it work. So this really only includes like, you know, the body of it. Um, but we're going to do the same thing, just weighing it down. I'm just using whatever rocks I had and some pillow fluff. And since this is not a really thick plush sock, you do have to shape it a little bit more um, to try to get it a smooth appearance. So we're just going to fill that up until I get my little gnome tall enough. And then we are just going to use a zip tie to gather that together. Again, there's these are anklet socks, so there's really not enough fabric left at the end to make a hat out of. But we have both, you know, the whole pair, so we can put both of them together. I'm going to take my little gnome beard from the stocking, hot gluing that to the top, just like we did before. And then hot gluing that to the sock itself. And then we can use the other anklet sock for the little hat. I was trying to figure out how I was going to make that work. We're going to do the toe of the sock for the pointy end. So I just zip tie that in place and then use a little pillow fluff. So this one is going to be a little bit taller, which is great because I want to decorate that part of the hat to kind of make it look like a um, ghost. So I just keep filling it with fluff. As you can see, um, again, those socks are a little bit trickier because you do kind of have to mold the um, fluff inside to kind of get the right shape. But I'm going to go ahead and attach it with some hot glue, doing like the little heel on the back there where you can't really see it. But I still have that finished edge to be the brim of my hat. I thought I didn't really like how it was looking, so I removed the zip tie to try to shape that a little bit more. I probably should have had it looking a little bit better before I put it on there. I hot glue it overlapping his nose a little bit reshaping the hat a little bit and reattaching the zip tie to give us that pointy little gnome hat tip. Now I wanted to make it look like a ghost. So to do that, I'm gonna use some black felt and I'm just gonna cut out some little oval pieces here for a little ghost eyes. Two of them about the same size. Just trying to make them look a little bit like a circle. And then we can just attach those to the white gnome hat with hot glue. And then I'm also going to trim up the beard a little bit into an abnormal like shape, like it would be like a little bit of a ghost tail going off to the side. And I'm also going to kind of glue the hat in like a droopy fashion to give it a little bit of character up there. And this is how this one turned out. This is our little ghost gnome using some white socks from Dollar Tree and the little gnome beard. Super cute, and I think they look adorable, all three of them together. What do you guys think? Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment let you know about our Facebook group. I always have it linked below. You're going to find out when I post new videos, and you'll get to see what everyone's been crafting. I also have a Facebook page. I'd really appreciate if you'd follow over there, and I have that linked below too, as long as my Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. Let's keep crafting. Now, I really love haunted houses for Halloween and these little plastic doll houses from Dollar Tree and make perfect haunted houses. You're gonna wanna pick two, the same style, and then you can just put them together. They clip together and you can put them together and make a whole house. So you're gonna need two of these. I'm not gonna need any of the accessories, but I took mine outside and um, used some black spray paint to paint it and I decided to do a set. So I had another two, took them outside, spray painted them all black and then now we're gonna make them look creepy. So I'm gonna use a combination of like elephant, um, ivory and 
ink black colors to give us that haunted and you know, haunted house look so i don't want them to be just straight black i want to bring out all this great detail on the plastic and so the first thing i do is take ivory a chunky brush and i'm just dry brushing all over and getting all that great texture you can see how much creepier this is making it look i'm going to do a set of two of these that are going to be um you know pretty much the same they're just going to kind of complement each other so just with the ivory alone you can see how much character that brought out and how much that made that look like a little haunted house so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here with the other one you want to distress everything the siding the roofing the windows, any kind of detail, you can bring that out. And I definitely recommend spray painting these first because they're a little tricky to paint the insides. You might be able to see those bright colors inside if you don't. So I just keep going with like the different colors of gray and white or ivory. And I went ahead and did a second one here, exactly the same. Just wanted to show you that. And then it's just a matter of popping them together. There's a little clip on the side. You have to kind of get it just perfect. And then you can pop them together. And if you have any of the pink showing through, you can always touch that up later. I'm going to go ahead and hot glue the roof together because that is the only part that really gapes when you put them together. So I just hot glue the entire roof line. And then I'm just going to go back and touch up any places where the paint may have come off. And then I wanted to display them on something a little bit more substantial than just a little plastic house, even though it is super cute. So I decided to use the little bamboo cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. I love these. These are one of my favorite things to craft with. I always pick up a stack when I see them at Dollar Tree because they're great for crafting and they're the perfect size for a little lawn for our haunted house. Now the first step, I kind of wanted them to look gray and creepy to kind of match with the house. So I'm just using that elephant gray chalk paint and giving them a wash of gray first to kind of cover up all of that tan color that we had going on. And then we can do a spooky little haunted house yard with those. I'm also going to go ahead and do the edges just to kind of make that all blend in. And then once I get all of the paint dry on these, we can attach our little haunted houses to them. I am just going to hot glue mine in place by putting some hot glue on each half. A good amount to make sure it's nice and strong. And sitting it, I kind of centered mine on the little cutting boards. And instead of just a lightweight plastic house now, you actually have a substantial piece that is not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to do the same thing here with haunted house number two. And then I want to decorate them, but I want to decorate them kind of complimentary. I did one of these on each one of my bookcases. So I want them to be kind of mirror images of each other. Now for a perfect creepy little haunted house yard, I am using Spanish moss from Dollar Tree, just attaching that to our cutting board with hot glue and kind of filling it in, making it look like dead grass. Once I get our first little yard done, we're gonna repeat those steps here on our second haunted house as well. And then we're gonna add some little Halloween touches. I was trying to find like miniature items that I could use to decorate the house or the property. And it's kind of hard to find things on that scale, but I did find a few things at Dollar Tree. As you can see, I trimmed those up to make them look a little bit better there in the end. And I decided to use some of the little wooden stickers from the Dollar Tree. So this one has like a couple different things on it. It has these little bats that are unfinished. So I thought it would look cute to stain those with a little antique wax by Waverly. And um, I kind of like the unfinished ones better than the glitter ones. But I'm going to glue one little wood bat here on the roof of this house. Change my mind. I decided to do it right there on the corner of the roof. And then I'm just using hot glue right on the sticker. We're gonna put another one over here. I think that looks cute. And then we are gonna do the same thing on the other side, just a mirror image. So I'm gonna do it on this corner. And then on the mirror image here on the other side. And I was just trying to find things small enough. There's also like a black spider on there as well. 
which I think is going to go nicely with it. So I'm going to hot glue like a black spider just on the front of the house like that. Again, doing complimentary. And then I wanted some little skulls. And the only skulls I could find were on the little Halloween bows from Dollar Tree. So I just pulled those off. And another fun little miniature touch. I wish they would do some of the um, fairy garden miniatures for Halloween, but I don't think I've ever found any of those. And this is how they turned out. I think they're super creepy and cute for Halloween. A haunted house. If you had like an old plastic dollhouse that was larger, you could really go to town with a DIY like this. And I saw like one of those four foot ones somebody was giving away on their curb the other day. And I really had to stop myself from getting it. <laughs> Now the next DIYs, I wanted to do some more Halloween gnomes and these are the wooden um, gnomes that are for Halloween. They have the little his and her gnomes and we're gonna paint them and make them look really creepy for Halloween. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the little face of the girl when green to make her look like a witch. I'm gonna paint the noses a flesh colored on the male one. And as you can see, I painted all of the hair white to kind of give me a base coat for the beard on the boy and the hair for the girl. Now for the body on both of them, we are just gonna do black. So I'm using ink paint that is in the color of black to do the body and to also decorate the little gnome hats. We're gonna add a lot of fun little details to these little signs here to make them look like a little witch and a little wizard for Halloween. So at first I was thinking a black and white color scheme and you can leave their hair that color, but I ended up changing mine to kind of make it a little bit creepier. But originally they were gonna be black and white. So you can kind of get what they would look like if I would have left them that way. And um, I wanted a little bit of a brim here for the little witch's hat, but I didn't really have anything that was like black and um, straight to go across there. So I just painted some black Halloween ribbon black all the way and drew like a little moon and stars on our wizard hat with a metallic silver paint pen. And I'm gonna outline him with that as well to kind of give him that like mystical wizard look. And then I'm gonna glue that black ribbon across her nose there to give her a little bit of a brim for like a more traditional witch's hat. That's when I decided I wanted their hair to be gray and creepy for Halloween. So I decided to go back and distress all their white hair with this elephant gray paint to kind of make it look old and creepy to make them look like little old witches and old wizards. And I really love the fact that I did the little witch's face green. I think that's perfect for Halloween. They're gonna be cute Halloween, but they can be a little bit creepy, right? Just touching up all of the paint on these. They do take a little while to paint, but they're really fun if you kind of take your time and do all the different steps here. Now I want them to hold little signs, so I decided to use some of these little wooden signs for Halloween. From um, Dollar Tree, I decided to do Wicked for her and Happy Halloween for him. And I'm just painting them pumpkin, bright orange with a makeup sponge and then put those on the front. And I think that's the perfect final touch for these little DIYs, a very cute little set of signs. I'm gonna reattach hangers and we're gonna hang them together as a pair. And what do you think? I'm glad that I decided to make their hair gray because I think it looks really cute, but I think it would have been really cute if they had white hair as well. You'll have to let me know in the comments below. Okay, let's do another haunted house. I wanted to show you a wooden version. I'm gonna use two of these little wooden haunted houses from the Dollar Tree. We're gonna put them together and make it an actual haunted house. So I'm gonna use Dollar Tree wood rulers for the side and roof line for the house. So it's just a matter of putting it all together. So to start with, I'm gonna start cutting down the rulers for side panels of our house like that, one ruler for each side. I hot glue the two bases together. That's how thick our house is gonna be, not too thick. That means the ruler is gonna be the perfect size. I hot glue the little ruler pieces with like the little notch side pointing toward the inside so you don't really see that. 
And the only tricky part on this was the roof line. As you can tell, the roof line is kind of all over the place. So we're gonna try to make this as easy as we can by doing an initial roof here first, cutting two um, pieces of ruler down, overlapping them into a point, and then building off of those to make it go higher up um, for the actual roof line of the house. So the pieces are gonna get smaller here and we're just gonna start you know, pairing them all together. I'm just cutting them one piece at a time with my saw to kind of finish up this roof line. And I'm really glad that I decided to finish up the walls and the roof because it really made it look like a more solid piece instead of the two little flat haunted house signs. So it does get a little tricky up here though with all the different pieces, <laughs> but you can make it work. If you have any, you know, cracks like that, you can always fill that up with hot glue or a spackle in the end to make it look a little bit better. But we're gonna do the best that we can do and we're almost done with this crazy rough line. So we've got that all cut and glued into place. Just going back and trying to clean it up a little bit, all the excess hot glue that we have and we're ready to paint. So I wanted this to be like a black and white theme Halloween DIY. So we're doing like an ivory um, coat of chalk paint and going all over, trying to fill up any of the gaps in my crazy um, roof line with the paint if I need to. You can always go back with spackle too if you have any kind of gaps, but I did a pretty good job of getting pretty um, close cuts here. So we're just gonna go ahead and paint all of it that same color. I wanted to do kind of a farmhouse, um, haunted house vibe on this. And so that is how we're gonna decorate this cute little guy. So I want it to be like kind of a two-sided piece. So we're gonna paint it all over the front, the back, the sides, and even the roof. We're gonna do something kind of fun here with the roof as well. I did give mine a light distress with a little agave just to give it a tiny bit of a little tinge of blue. You could always distress it with gray or with antique wax. Um, I, I just kind of want it. I like that distressed feel. So I always try to distress my pieces a little bit. I decided to do like the windows and the doors with the antique wax by Waverly to kind of make them look a little bit creepier. And I just kind of play around with it until I'm happy with it. Now for the roof, I thought it'd be really fun to give it like a metal tin roof. So I'm gonna use one of these like little disposable cookie sheets from the Dollar Tree and cut down the panel that's inside. It's gonna give me this really thin metal piece that's super easy to cut whatever size I need. And I'm just gonna cut a strip the same width as the roof line and we can make little metal roofs. So I cut a piece for this, this part of the roof, hot gluing that on. And I'm really glad I decided to give it this detail. I think it looks really cute. I love crafting with these little cookie sheets. Now I did have the same problem that I had before is that it has this crazy roof line. So lots of pieces involved here to get all of the roof, but I just keep cutting that same strip down into smaller pieces that are gonna fill up all the grooves. This part in the middle, probably the trickiest, but I was able to get it to work. And I think that gave it a really fun feel. Now for the base of it, I'm gonna use one of the bamboo cutting boards again. This time I'm gonna cover it in um, burlap. So this is a burlap roll that I got at Walmart, but you could always use Dollar Tree burlap. And this was a nice six inch roll, about the same size as my cutting board. So I'm just gonna hot glue that overlapping to the bottom to give me a nice burlap base for our little house. Now I do wanna age the roof of this, kinda of like I aged the house. I want it to look old and rusty since it's metal. So I'm gonna do that with Antique Wax by Waverly, distressing all over, just kind of like pouncing rust on there, wiping off any excess with a paper towel. And we can attach our little haunted house by gluing it to our burlap. The burlap has the holes in it, so it's gonna glue down straight to the board underneath. And then let's decorate it like a farmhouse. I started with some hay bales from Dollar Tree, and then I was also gonna use some Dollar Tree pumpkins, but then I realized that they were very kind of more ivory than I used before. So before I get any further, I'm just gonna distress my haunted house with a little ivory too, just to kind of bring that color in because we're gonna use that a little bit here in our haunted house yard. 
And then I can go back and do my Distressing with Antique Wax by Waverly over that. But that was just me being, ah, oh, this wasn't the exact color that I wanted. So before I get any further with decorating the yard for a haunted house, I thought I better touch it up. So again, we're going to do the little mini hay bales are perfect. And um, just there on the ledge for the house, we can do one on each side of the door for the little haunted farmhouse. I also thought I really wanted the windows to pop a little bit more. So I decided to kind of um, outline them awkwardly with a black paint pen there to give them that black and white feel since we did the metal roof. And I thought that provided a, a little fun touch. And you can never distress too much. <laughs> now to decorate it with pumpkins. I decided to use these like ivory pumpkins from Dollar Tree. That's why I added a little bit more of that yellow color ivory to our house because these definitely kind of have that tinge. I wanted them to match a little bit better. So we're just gonna hot glue these around. Um, I just took them off the little um, pins on the bottom and just pile them around because I really want it to look like a um, like pumpkin patch, kind of haunted farmhouse. And then some of them we can make into jack-o'-lanterns with just a black magic marker. Super simple little jack-o'-lantern faces on the front of these. And we can use these to decorate the front of our little haunted farmhouse. Nothing crazy, just some triangles. And I do that one on each side. Then for some more creepy things, I thought we could use some of these little Halloween rings from Dollar Tree to give us a little tiny miniature black bat here um, next to one of the windows on our little haunted farmhouse. This is something that you can find for miniature since it is so hard to find little tiny miniature items like this from the Dollar Tree. And they also have like, you know, Skulls. I'm not a big fan of the orange spider rings. I don't think those look super creepy. But again, I was trying to go with like the black and white theme. Now Target has some stuff too. I found like some little tiny rats there that I thought we could use. And then I also wanted there to be a ghost like looking out the window. So I used one of these little Dollar Tree ghost stickers and I hot glued it inside the house. So it was actually peeking out one of the windows, which I thought was a really fun little touch. And then we can have like a little black bat scurrying. Some little black creepy creatures all around our little haunted house. Then I wanted it to look creepy. I thought we could do a little beware sign. So I'm going to make my own just out of a popsicle stick. And you can cut that kind of crazy and ragged um, like an old sign would be. And um, super easy to cut those down to size. Now I'm using my black paint pen to add some more black details just by edging out the side and roof line of the house as well. Wanted to bring in a little bit more black and then we are just gonna use a black Sharpie and write beware on the little sign all creepy and we can just attach that to the front of the house with a little bit of hot glue. Lots of little touches here. I finish it up with a little black Sharpie here along the exposed cutting board and that is the last step here in our little haunted farmhouse. I think it's so cute. I love the little details. I think my favorite thing is like the little ghost like peeking out of the window and maybe the little hay bales. Super cute. A little tricky with that roof line, but I think we did a pretty good job. What do you guys think about this DIY? Now the next set of DIYs, I got some of these like eek and boo letters from the Dollar Tree. I never really know what to do with these, but I wanted to show you an idea, a super easy idea I figured out how to decorate with these. I want mine to be ivory, so I, I mixed up some ivory like homemade chalk paint and I am just gonna paint both of those that ivory color. I kind of want them to have a bone look because I was doing this for a Halloween wall that had lots of skeletons for decor. So I kind of wanted that skeleton look to the little boo letters. And so they're gonna be kind of plain with just a coat of ivory all over the top and sides. And then I'm gonna use a few other elements from the Dollar Tree to kind of take these up a notch, make them look a little bit better. These little galvanized metal signs, which I always don't know what to do with these as well. So I'm gonna kind of put them all together. So for this one, I'm gonna do the jack-o'-lantern and the witch's hat and the word boo. There's already a rope hanger on the boo, but it's not quite long enough. So we're gonna replace it 
with some more twine and we're going to string these all together. So I start with no string at all and I staple my new twine into a loop like that where then I can attach the loop to the back of my galvanized metal jack-o-lantern and just trying to find a way because, you know, attaching it to metal is not always the easiest. So I brace it with a little piece of burlap to help make that a little bit stronger when I hot glue that to the back. And then I'm going to do the witch's hat underneath the word boo. And it's going to be a long hanging sign that's going to fill up my wall nicely. I use the existing hanger and just staple it to the back. And we're gonna do the same exact thing with our eek sign. This time we're using the metal ghost and the metal school. And so I just have to replace the rope between the top metal piece and the word with a loop up, another piece of twine, and then we're gonna glue that to the back of the school just like we did before. So that's probably the only tricky part. Otherwise, this DIY was super easy because um, the top hanger and this bottom hanger, you can just use the ones that are already on there. Just staple it right underneath the knot and the words are nice and thick. You can definitely staple to it. And this is how they turned out. I paired these with that beware bone sign that we made in our one of our last Halloween DIY videos. And I hung one of these longer signs on each side a very quick, easy Dollar Tree DIY and something to make with those signs you don't know what to do with. Okay, we're gonna make our own custom Halloween doormat using one of these Stylewell 18 by 30 uh, mats from Home Depot. They're about $14, $15. And the secret behind these little doormats is that you can do sublimation on them just perfectly. You don't have to do any surface prep or anything. So I'm just going to use my lint roller to clean this one up. And I have a large format printer. So I was able to do a pretty large image here. And I'm pretty sure I have this actual image that I can share with you. Um, I'll try to find it and post it in the description below. I printed that out in reverse on my sublimation paper on my Epson printer that I have converted for sublimation. And I got my printer actually on Amazon. I think I have that linked in my Amazon shop below too. And I just use heat proof tape to put my image directly on the rug, cover it in parchment paper. And we are gonna go ahead and sublimate our own doormat. I wanted to show you how easy it was to do. So I did 400 degrees for one minute, which is my normal sublimation time. And then my easy press is only like, you know, a nine by nine. So I have to do it in many steps, even though I had the large format. Um, <laughs> so I'm kind of trying to move it around with as little um, ghosting or shading in between the different pieces as I can. And you can kind of tell when your sublimation works because the color comes all the way through the paper as you can see there. And that's why one reason why you have to use the parchment paper to protect your iron or your easy press. And I just do one section at a time. Now this doormat's a really nice quality. The rubber is nice and thick. I didn't really have to worry too much about melting anything here. And I just keep repeating that 400 degrees for one minute until we get the entire image sublimated on. I know a lot of you are not set up for sublimation, but I kind of wanted to show you this to show you how easy and fun it can be to make your own products. I personalized mine with our last name on there for our doormat, but I believe the image that I saved was a plain one where you could do your own thing. So first time I ever sublimated on this one and I was pleasantly surprised. The only problem is I didn't like the black shading that I got on that top part of the haunted house and the very bottom part. So I decided to use a little spray polycrylic to try to brighten it up. And you can see it really brings the color out. I love the welcome foolish mortals and this fun image of this haunted house I found as well. So I probably shouldn't have went all the way to the bottom with my image, but I'm gonna show you how I touch it up super easy. I just use a black paint pen and we're gonna kind of fill in that area where I got a little bit of ghosting there at the bottom. Just kind of spreading that out with the paper towel to make that look a little bit blacker. And any of the areas that I think didn't quite get black enough, 
I'm just gonna touch that up with black paint pen as well until I'm happy with it. But I think I'll do this again. I noticed that Home Depot still has these and it's definitely a lot easier than doing trying to do sublimation on the core doormats because again, this is the perfect polyester material. It is perfect. I like it much better now. I'm gonna spray it with another coat of polycrylic to bring out all the bright colors. And this is how it looks on my black and white checked rug outside my door for Halloween. I think it's so cute and I really love that welcome foolish mortals message. <laughs> so a fun sublimation DIY to make your very own custom doormat. Hey, I wanted to take a moment out of today's video and let you know that I've introduced memberships here on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos and you can help support me here on YouTube. You're gonna get other perks like shout outs in my videos as well and I'd really appreciate it if you join the Crafty Beach family. Now for the next DIY, um, I wanted to decorate my little table outside my front door for Halloween. So I drew out a circle on the back of some Dollar Tree Halloween fabric. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do a very easy custom little Halloween tablecloth to go under our next DIY. So the first thing I do is iron out our fabric because I just want a tablecloth that is the exact size as the little table I have by my door. Um, and I don't want it flying around or anything like that with bad weather. So once I get it ironed, I kind of starched it to kind of make it stiffer. I'm just gonna go around and cut out that circle shape. Super easy, and I was going for like a black and white theme. This has a little bit more colors in it, but I think it's gonna go nice. The haunted house matches perfectly with that doormat that we just made. And then I spray this with polycrylic to seal it up, make it more weatherproof and kind of make it like more uh, like a weatherproof fabric, if you will. So I do a couple of coats of that, let that dry. And then I'm just gonna attach that to the table outside my front door, just by kind of duct taping it down to the surface where you wouldn't really be able to see that. But so it's not gonna fly around and go crazy in our um, weather we have here in Florida. So I just kind of, you know, fold the tape, duct tape onto itself and do one on all four sides. And I think that's gonna work well. And then this is gonna be the perfect base for this DIY. I picked up two of the little coffin signs um, from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna make a coffin. So they have a different message on each side and I'm gonna kind of go with that and I'm gonna use Dollar Tree Craftwood for the sides. So you kind of have to play around with your sizes in the store to make sure you get the right size. This one's gonna be perfect for the end. I don't have to cut it off very much, but I'm just gonna measure, cut two pieces down. So that's gonna be both sides of the coffin because I want this to be like a 3D coffin. This is my fancy saw that I always talk about. I love this thing. I got this at Home Depot. It is a miter saw, but it also slides so you can do really large projects. Don't be afraid of your power tools. They can really save you a lot of time. So I didn't have to cut very much off those. I'm not gonna miter it or anything like that, um, but I got a pretty good start. Now with some more of the craft wood, I'm gonna measure down my little side pieces here, one for each side. And then I will also have to cut down a piece for the top and a piece for the bottom. And then we can start putting this together. I like the images that are already on it. And so we're just gonna kinda go from that and do a really fun little black coffin. And this was a great um, DIY for outdoors on my table because it's not too large, but it is a nice creepy coffin factor, great for greeting trick-or-treaters. And then it's just a matter of putting it together. Once I have all my pieces cut down to size, I just hot glue onto that border um, that's already there and try to get those like a 90 degree angle going all the way around our coffin and filling this out. I cut the bottom piece a little bit larger so that it would provide a nice base. And if you're fancy with your miter, you can get the right miter cut for this, but I wasn't gonna begin to try to measure that angle. <laughs> and um, filling out the top part. 
once you get all the sides um, on here, then it's just a matter of attaching the other coffin to it. I wanted a different message on each side of my coffin if I could just turn it to get a different message. So I made sure that I had welcome on one side and the other trick or treat image on the other side. So I just hot glue my top piece on and I fill up any of my gaps with just some hot glue. And then it's just a matter of painting. I'm gonna do just a coat of black ink paint all along all four sides and the edges of my signs to give them that nice black coffin look. And this is great since so it's two-sided. You can make it welcome all the time. Halloween, you could turn it around for trick-or-treat. Just a really fun little coffin DIY. So this is how it turned out. I think I like the trick-or-treat side even better just because the black and the white color scheme. But this is how it looks with that little tablecloth that we made outside my entryway. This is the welcome. And that Halloween fabric is super cute. And then you can also flip it around to get your trick or treat message on the other side, just by turning it around. And I think that was my favorite one. So just a fun Dollar Tree DIY you can do with those little coffin signs at the Dollar Tree if you needed some crafting inspiration. I love it. I think it's so fun. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching my 15 Halloween DIYs. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It really helps. Comment your favorite DIY below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Enjoy the final reveal.
want to give a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach Fun members. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R., Tracy Knight, Verna Noctegal, Julie Miller, Nancy Wunner, Jan Zalata, Tammy Coates, and Janae Farrington. Thank you so much for supporting my channel here on YouTube. I appreciate you so much. And if you would like to watch another Crafty Beach video, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here.